99 fruit bats on a hill's hoist. Indigenous motif and white Australian icon all in one and the sense of humour is very upfront. Bat poo is included. So it will be all over the place. Uh, and consequently the name a dog's breakfast. <laughs> Those of you who are acquainted with dogs will know, of course, that's different to a dingo's breakfast, which is simply a leak and a good look around. <laughs> Lynn Onus was a man of wit and extreme self-taught talents. He died suddenly four years ago at the height of his career. Now at the Museum of Contemporary Art in Sydney, a retrospective has just opened, the first ever retrospective exhibition of an urban Aboriginal artist. 60 works in all, this documents his journey. As he used to say, sheep on the right, gum tree on the left. And when you got really adventurous, you put the sheep on the left and the gum tree on the right. Um, but he always wanted to find some way to express his Aboriginality or his, his coolness. He is truly unique. I, I see that he sits both inside and at the top of, outside and inside at the same time. Right? because he challenges the very pantheon to which we suggest he might like to belong. Right? But in such an inclusive, non-aliating way, um, in, he, he, can, he can put across such pungent and potent messages and unsettling messages in a way that, that still keeps everybody with him, and very few artists can do that. With a Scottish mother and Koori father, his paintings straddle Western realism and traditional indigenous forms, the style and permission to paint traditionally coming from a visit to Maningrida and this man, Jack Wanawu. But his real passion always was politics, Aboriginal rights, injustice. <laughs> father, Bill Owner, spent his entire life fighting for Aboriginal rights, so Lynn had to be a political person. So it was always there, but he was trying to find a really new and meaningful way to express it through his art. If ever we needed a Lynn Owner in this country, we need him now, right? And his chapter on that started back in the 70s. I mean, reconciliation is what I'm talking about. Um, you know, it was a government policy that didn't come out until 1901. But he has been, his art, the power of his art is really um, embedded in the fact that he used it to reconcile his own, re acknowledge it first and reconcile his own mixed ancestry. In the picture, is that John Law's looking for nits in Jeff Kennett's um, hairdo? Indeed it is. Indeed it is. This painting. Gary Foley, Aboriginal activist and close friend to Onus, was in dispute with the Kennett government over school closures when this was painted. He applauds the timing of this exhibition. I've been walking around this exhibition and it's just sort of blown me out when I think about the enormous body of work that he achieved in his lifetime. Because I can remember when he, when he first started out painting and the efforts that he was doing then and uh, some of my favourite paintings of his, uh, some of his earliest, and yet the way in which he developed and the, the message that he's got for Australia. It's here, it's powerful, and I can't think of a more appropriate sort of thing for international visitors to be exposed to during the Olympics. And they'll be exposed to the humour. It's everywhere in his paintings and sculptures. In the Adventures of X and Ray series, this is entitled Just Slipping Down to the Pub for a Minute, and this is X and Ray witness the sinking of the last ship to carry wood chips from Australia. There is a bite to it all. Looking around this exhibition, you can see the subversive wit of uh, Lynn just uh, jumps out of these paintings at you. And I mean, there's nothing, I would have thought there's nothing more dangerous than an artist uh, with a well-refined sense of humour. He's dealing with the most controversial, confrontational issues of our day. But people will come up and love his work and like it and feel included and feel they have to take a kind of position. You know, the powerful weapon, it's a very powerful... And I don't see any other Australian artist who has that weapon. And there's the sheer arresting beauty of his work, his detailed attention to the look, the atmosphere of the land and the water. When I look around here, it's the thing that gets me more than anything else. One night he said to me, do you know, I'll never really be dead. And I said, what? 
And he said, as long as there is a piece of this artwork that I've done hanging on somebody's wall somewhere, I'm never really going to be dead. Part of me is still going to be alive. And so when you walk around here and see so much, you sort of feel, wow, yeah, you're here, bud. 